in Scotland. Can you talk about kind of what the move has meant to you, why it's been such kind of an instant success? Like, what, what is it about playing in, in Scotland that's, um, that's gelled so well with you? Yeah, you know, I think it, I think it suits my uh, type of game, you know. I went over there at a good age with uh, a lot of professional games under my belt from Wanderers, um, which I'm very grateful for. You know, it's, it had a good platform to go over there and, and showcase my ability, and um, the club, St. Mirren, have obviously given me the best chance to do that. So, yeah, happy that it's gone well so far. Mate, we spoke to Cam Devlin yesterday about the Scottish flavour in the Socceroos at the moment with the guys born there and obviously playing there like yourself. Um, do you feel like there's sort of similar values between Scottish and Australian football that could, could benefit us um, going forward? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think the league's a great league, um, the SPFL. As you said, there's a lot of Aussie boys going over there from the A-League, which is good for, for us as a national team and, and us moving forward. So, yeah, it's a great league to be a part of. Um, in my opinion, it's a, it's a good league. It's a good step up from the A-League. And physical-wise, I think it gets your body ready for, for men's football more so than you know, what, what we're used to with more games and, and more um, yeah, demand on the, on the body and the schedule. I know that at Western Sydney you, you don't get much love when things go wrong, but what about over there and the, the differences and I don't know how much you can understand from what's coming down in the stands if things do go wrong, but that, that little sprinkle of pressure in that regard, what's that like to, to try and push your career forward and, and has it worked for you? Yeah, definitely. It's a good question. It's, um, you can definitely feel it at, at some stages in games where... You're under the pump, and, and you know your fans obviously need need that win, or the whole club needs the three points to to sort of progress up the table and, and stay away from that relegation battle. So I guess that's the main thing. The relegation battle is huge over there, and no team wants to go down. And, and as a club of like St. Mirren, we don't want to go down, and we want to be as high as possible. So we want to do you know well every week to, to be in that top six come the end of the season. Uh, Keanu, have you had any discussions with the coaching staff with Arnie about what sort of role they envision you playing for the Socceroos at this World Cup? What qualities they want you to bring? What attributes they want you to endeavour to f bring to this squad? Yeah, definitely. We spoke on the phone, you know, when he um, congratulated me to come to the come to Qatar and join the squad and he told me, you know, he told me that I've been doing well with with what I've been doing in Scotland with bringing a lot of energy, a lot of legs. Um, yeah, said so I've been playing with, with, with freedom and, and just you know, bring that form over to the to the World Cup squad. And I've had a request from ESPN South Africa to ask you. Obviously, you were born in South Africa. Um, Kieran spends a bit more time there than you before you moved over. He's gone back to play for Kaiser Chiefs. But did you have any interest throughout your junior football in representing South Africa at ever le any level that you knocked back in hope of playing for the Socceroos? No, not really. No, <laughs> I came over to Australia when I was nine months, so pretty much one year, one year old and. Yeah, I don't know any better. I'm, I'm Australian through and through, so I never, never thought about not, not playing for Australia my whole life, so I'm grateful that, you know, things like this and the Olympics have, have come my way at such a young age, and I'm just, you know, hoping to kick on. So the Federation never reached, the South African Federation never reached out to you? No, no, not at all, no, never. Uh, Keanu, there was some commentary during the World Cup qualifiers that the Socceroos lacked a physical presence in midfield like we used to have with, with Milligan, with, with Yedinak, with, even with Grella. Do you think that that is a role that you could play at the base of the midfield? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think um, that's always been a, a strong part of my game. Uh, from a young age, I've always loved to get stuck in. So I'm going to continue to do that um, over here. Obviously, Scotland has helped with how physical that league is. And that's um, yeah, helped me to grow in that, in that side of my game even more than, than what I did go over there with. So... Yeah, definitely gonna gonna bring that over here in this in this squad and this team. Keanu, congratulations on the call up. Um, strong contingent of Oli Roos players from the Tokyo squad. Can you just talk to us about what that tournament experience did for you, did for that group of players that are here at the moment and even the familiarity between all of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, big credit to all the boys that are here because, you know, we worked hard for that for that tournament to get to that. Olympic stage as well, and that gave us the experience of, um, you know, men's football as such. I know it's 23s, but it's for us it was a big, um, big step up from where we were all playing. Uh, most of us were playing in the A League, so it was a good challenge, a good, um, good experience for us to go through that all together. And um, obviously Arnie was there with us, you know, which helped um, integrate us into into men's football here, into the national team. So, yeah, we, you know, we were grateful to have that experience, and um, it's good that you know, a, a number number of boys of us are here from there. Keanu, you're um, one of a few members of the squad 
who have come through at Blacktown City, uh, and also after that the Wanderers. So you've grown up in a, you know, a, a football heartland in Australia. How much of um, your development can you credit to, I guess, coming through those two clubs? They seem to have set you on a pretty good path. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a big thank you to, to the West of Sydney, you know, from Blacktown days to integrating into Western Sydney was massive for me because, you know, that's where all the fun started. It was fun when I was young. It was still fun now, but it's, it's you know, grew my love for the game when I was young. My brother played as well. So, yeah, Blacktown and, and Wanderers was, was massive for my childhood. Uh, and also there's been reports recently um, of, of clubs in England keeping an eye on you potentially. I know you just got to St Mirren, but... Um, do you see this World Cup and I guess the, the next little phase of your career as an opportunity to, to show even more broadly you know, your talents to, to clubs that might be looking for you? Because I'm sure St Mirren, like a lot of Scottish clubs, you know, are, are selling clubs and they like to bring players in and then move them on for profit. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to look to improve my game. Um, every game that I play, just get better. Um, yeah, things like that. Obviously, I'd love to you know, progress as far as I can in my career and play at the highest level. You know, I think everybody as a player wants to play in the Premier League. That's where I'd love to be. So I'm in the UK now, it's, it's a stepping stone, but as you said, yeah, if, um, if I can progress in, in another stepping stone before that stage, then you know, that's, that'd be great for, my, for me, my career, and, and everyone involved, so. Keanu, making your debut for the Socceroos relatively late on in the cycle, just against New Zealand, in fact, you and Cammy, two of those. How, what's the process been like to integrating into this you know, senior Socceroos side and becoming one of the lads? What's that look like? Yeah, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling, obviously. Um, it's pretty good because, you know, I've worked with Arnie before and, and, and the staff, and I know, you know, what they expect in terms of coming around the camp and, and you know, um, being with the boys and how to act. So it, it's good, you know, and I just be myself, I smile, and, and they seem to like that. So I'm just going to continue to do that and uh, out on the training pitch do my best and, you know, any minutes that I get to do my absolute best and, and that's all, I, um, you know, people can ask and that's all I can ask myself. And we've heard stories of weird coffee orders from the barista and FIFA games and COD groups. What's it like in the day-to-day -day life at the academy? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. There's you know, a whole bunch of boys and everyone likes different things. So some of us like you know, PlayStation, FIFA, we've got ping pong set up, uh, pool. The social room is pretty, pretty busy, which is you know, a good sign of a good team with, with good culture. So we've got to continue that. Keanu, as one of the younger members of the squad, can I just ask, what are your, following on previous questions, what are your goals for this campaign and what hopes do you have to get some time in the tournament? Yeah, look, you know, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to have my name um, be named in that squad of the 26 players, you know, arguably the, the best 26 in Australia. So that's a great feeling at this stage to, to be recognised and and to be rewarded for all the hard work. So yeah, you know, whatever happens now is a bonus for me, but I'm gonna do my absolute best and um, enjoy every moment that comes my way. And um, you know, hopefully if, if things come off the back of that, then that's, that's a great feeling, but you know, we'll, we'll go day by day. So what do you have to do to get a few minutes in a game during this World Cup? I think just continue what I'm doing my whole life, you know, work hard, um, train, train well, train hard, and just give yourself the best ability to, to you know, be selected. So Arnie says there's two people for every position and there's 26 players who can play, but we know that some players are etched in stone, so to speak, and some aren't. Do you, what do you see your role in terms of pushing those more senior players? Yeah, it's obviously a squad of you know, 26 players, great players as well, come from all over the world. Um, yeah, they're all good boys, but you know, at the end of the day, we are competing against each other for spots, but we're a team as well. So whoever is selected, we want, you know, we want the best result possible on the field. So. Whoever is out there, we just want to do our best and make Australia proud. Keanu, everyone talks about, or you've been talking about as well, um, the great dynamic in the team and how you all get on so well. Um, you would appear to be one of the most relaxed ones. Can you tell us who the stress heads are? And you keep an eye on each other. And when you see someone starting to freak out a bit, does someone pull them aside? You know, where does Arnie sit in that stress level situation as well? No, nah, look, I think we're all, we're all grown men now, so we can all, um, yeah. We all talk to each other and we help each other out when we can. Um, yeah, in terms of the there's no real stress heads in the team, I don't think. I think everyone's pretty good and it's a good, um, good atmosphere around it, around camp. So yeah, we're happy with. And hi, so I, I've seen that you've called St. Mirren and Scotland fans to come out and support in Australia. I'm wondering what kind of response, um, what kind of response you've gotten for that? Oh um, yeah, for everyone supporting me, you mean? Yeah, it's uh, obviously a great feeling um, to have the whole you know, of Paisley behind me, uh, the whole all Sam Mirren fans, I think I'm the first player to go to a World Cup from them, so they were super happy. And I'm um, just, you know, 
amazed to, to be able to, to um, play here for them. And do you think Scotland fans are going to be back in Australia? Yeah, definitely. I think without Scotland in the World Cup, I think there's a number of us here from Scotland too. So I think <laughs> seven players. So they'll definitely be back in us, I think. And I wanted to ask you about the viral video supporting LGBTQ rights. Um, a little bit of how that came about in the squad and if that meant anything to you personally, the release of that video. Oh, look, you know, I think the, the um, Australia made that video before the World Cup came out. But um, yeah, now that we're here, we just want to focus on football, day-to-day um, -day training and just um, improving and being ready for that first game. Are there, are there any kind of protests or anything planned for here while you're here? Oh, no, no, not that, not that I know of. So we just want to focus on, you know, doing the best we can and making Australia proud on the pitch. And that's the main thing now. Last one, Dave. <laughs> um, you spoke about energy and legs before, and, and that's been one of the traits that you, you thought you brought into the camp and, and for your selection. Has that been a big theme um, coming to this camp about how you guys can take on France, take that mentality into France to run a, and impress against a really you know, supremely talented midfield themselves? Yeah, definitely. I think you need to be um, at the top of your game to, to face a, a team like France, you know. And when you look at the squad, I think majority of the boys have been playing minutes or you know us boys have been playing minutes that's why you know we were we were looked at um at this time of the year to to be in this squad so we just want to take our form that we have been in club to to the games uh, starting on tuesday g'day aaron david mark from the abc um this is a relatively new squad in some ways can you tell me how it feels what's the mood of the squad at the moment um everyone's excited there's lots of energy um we're all there's all big smiles uh, on everyone's faces. We're happy to be here. Um, but yeah, the closer it gets to the games, I think the more focused we'll be and um, we'll try and be ready for, this, for the first game. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close now. What are your expectations of the games and particularly the game against France? Yeah, we want to go out and um, have a positive performance. Um, yeah, it's a World Cup. Um, we want to maybe surprise a few people. Um, that's the goal. We want to play well and get points. How are you going to do it? I, I mean, I mean that. Sorry, in all seriousness. I mean, when I ask about you know setting goals, what what game style are you going to play against France? And you talk about getting points, so. You realistically believe you can go out and get a draw or a win against France? Yeah, we are. There's no point in being here if you don't believe that. So, um, yeah, we haven't gone into detail with how we're going to approach the game yet. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to start very soon. But yeah, the, the basic things of um, sport we need, like um, application, uh, focus, this, this sort of things of are hugely important um, if we want to make the most of the opportunity. Hi Aaron, Emma Camp here from The Guardian. Congratulations on making the squad. Um, it wasn't so long ago you were training in a local park um, and now you're sitting here in Qatar, you know, a week out from playing your first match. Can you talk to me about where your head was at at that time and how it's been since joining Celtic? Yeah, it was a tough period for me. Um, in China, there was lots of COVID restrictions and stuff like that. And um, yeah, Arnie gave me a call a few times and he wanted me to be involved. So that gave me a, a real motivation um, that he wanted me to be there. And yeah, that's what my focus was on. I uh, just worked as hard as I could, got into the best uh, shape as possible and tried to help and yeah now I, be I always believed that we could do it and um, yeah now we're sitting here and uh, we're chasing other beliefs and dreams. Um, you've been killing it for Celtic what kind of an influence has Ange had on you while you've been there I mean you obviously know him really well. Yeah Celtic's massive club huge uh, expectations to win every game we play. Um, I'm learning and the 
the quality is very high, the standard and training and uh, there's lots of good players there, so it's a good it's a, it's a good place to be if to uh, improve and uh, to test myself. So um, I'm grateful I've been given that opportunity. Aaron, Tom Smith East from Keep Up. Your second World Cup, how does this one, although two of the opponents are the same, how does this one compare to last time and how does Arnie compare as a World Cup boss with Van Marwijk? Sorry, can you repeat the last bit? Yeah, how does Arnie compare with Bert as a World Cup boss? Yeah, every, every manager is different. They all have a different approach to the game. Um, Arnie's... Uh, very good at man managing. Um, he gets everyone in a positive, uh, positive way, positive thoughts, um, belief. He's he's big on that, and um, I enjoy working uh, under Ani greatly. Good day, Aaron Liam Fitzgibbon from Fox Sports, mate. Um, uh, just going back to your recent career, uh, how do you reflect on, on your move to China? I know at the time people were saying maybe it wasn't the best move for your career. Um, obviously, it's worked out well uh, now with the chance you've got at Celtic, but how do you look back on that and how do you reflect on it in the context of, of your career? It was, it was, a, it was a different, uh, something different in my career. I like to, I like to experience different things. Um, China was, it's a competitive league. I played, I played with some of the best players I've played with over there. So there is quality over there, and um, the only difficult thing was the um, the COVID restrictions and everything. It was difficult on my family because they couldn't come. So I was doing like long periods without seeing them, and but yeah, I enjoyed that experience. Um, it was, it was cool to live in Shanghai. It was, it's an amazing city. And, yeah, it's something I can always look back on in life and say I lived in China. <laughs> so it's, it's cool. Aaron, Adam Peacock from News Corp. Um, four years ago, France, first up, you played and played well. And not a lot went wrong um, for us in the game, but we lost. Can you remember much about it, how it played out, tactically, like, you know, physically, all those things, or kind of it's evaporated from the memory now, <laughs> given that you've played so many games? Yeah, it's hard to remember everything. I remember it being a close game and feeling we were a little bit unlucky sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, going into detail, I don't remember too much um, about it. Well, back in the present, you, you're playing Champions League at the moment, so you're playing at the best level you can play at at club level, and those games, you've noticed that with Celtic, one little thing goes wrong, you get punished. Yeah. Um, how, looking at the two squads, you go, well, there's a bit of a difference there in kind of perception of quality. What do you need to get exactly right in these games in terms of the performance, the 11 people against the other 11 people. What what stands out for you in games like this? I think you have to take your chances. We might You might not get many chances in the game, but if you take your chances, uh, it, puts the other, it puts the opposition under pressure. I've, I've played in games before, like when I was in England and stuff, where we beat bigger teams. And generally in those games we took the chances and we were very resolute defensively. I think this is important. Aaron, uh, Vince Rigari from the Sydney Morning Herald, mate. Great to see you here. Um, you spoke before about what you had to do to get right for the June qualifiers and you played you know, brilliantly for 90 minutes then 120 minutes off the back of basically no football. Do you think then, given what you've done over the last few months at Celtic, playing a lot in Scotland and the Champions League and Cups, that you've got even more to give the national team at this tournament? Yeah, I've got, hopefully it um, goes well. Um, yeah, um, I've been training hard, trying to get as many minutes as possible uh, uh, to be in good, good uh, space before. So hopefully that leaves me in good stead for the games. Um, all I can do is try and play my best and help the team if I'm 
picked. Um, yeah, like always. Uh, and in Scotland as well at the moment, basically every other game you'll finish it up and there'll be an, an Aussie you'll be able to talk to at the end of it with so many over there. Just keen to know what you think guys like Keanu and Cammy in particular, some of the Aussie midfielders who are over there and making names for themselves, what they can bring to this this squad and this midfield if they're, they're called upon. You know, Arnie's brought in some, some fresh blood there. Yeah, they're doing well. Um, yeah, in Scotland, there's lots of Aussies at the moment and you see them every few weeks. Um, it's a good league and a uh, competitive league. Uh, yeah, they're doing well and um, they bring lots of energy into the group. Uh, lots of hunger. They want to they prove themselves. And this is important in football, for sure. Uh, Aaron, Joey Lynch from ESPN. You're one of the more experienced players in this group. As Adam said, you play in Champions League. Not to speak for Arnie, but you're probably one of the first names on the team sheet. What, have you per what goals have you personally set yourself for at this World Cup, both in terms of on the pitch and as a presence in the dressing room with a lot of younger boys in it? I'm not much of a big talker around everyone. Everyone knows that, that knows me. But I just try and do the right things uh, off the pitch, on the pitch. And, yeah, hopefully, um, I don't know. I don't like to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just try and play well. And then um, hopefully that inspires people. Yeah. I was going to ask you that question, um, but I guess have any of the younger players in this squad sort of sought you out and come to you for advice, or do you feel at least a sense of responsibility? Yeah, I think everyone um, has responsibility. We're lucky to be here. There's, there's only 26 of us. Um, when you put the jersey on, you got the, the responsibility to do the best for the nation. So, um, yeah, I, I, I do speak to the lads. Um, uh, sometimes we have little chats and I might give them a few pointers or something, but I don't, I'm not dancing around screaming, shouting at people. I'm not that type of guy. Aaron, Sam Lewis from ABC. It's lovely to see you here as well. Bouncing off sort of an earlier question, and maybe this is a pointless question because you say you don't like talking about yourself, but that period where you were preparing for the playoff games against the UAE in Peru and you were sort of locked down with one or two Socceroo staff members trying to get your body as fit as possible. Can you sort of take us into your mind frame at that point in your life? What was your guiding star what was your motivation and was there anyone in particular who sort of helped keep you on that path probably the little boy inside of me that started playing football that's probably what uh motivated me um always the world cup was we were close to qualif qualifying um and then yeah we got to the the playoff games which is so important i knew that if I was going to be involved, I didn't want to let anyone down. So that was another uh, big motivation. Uh, probably that. Tracy Holmes, ABC. Um, again, I know you don't like talking about yourself, but would you describe yourself as intense? Not really. Not off the pitch. On the pitch, I try and be intense. Um, off the pitch, more relaxed. Try and, I don't know, chilled. <laughs> so just on that, um, are you the type of person that kind of focuses and builds and builds and builds to a game and then kicks back afterwards? Or do you have periods every day leading into a match where you have some time out? And how do you get that time out? How do you just zone out? What do you do? Yeah, usually a couple of days before a game I'll start to be more tense, anxious sort of thing. Um, that's, that's professional sport um, but you got to deal with that and then yeah once I've played and I've given my all then that all goes away and um, yeah just disappears and then the next game comes and then you do it again so it's, uh, it's yeah it's part of the game you have to 
Uh, until Aaron, Dave Davudovich from Keep Up. Um, can I just get you to talk about your sort of evolution over the last few months at Celtic, I guess physically, technically, tactically as well? Um, and also just to drill down into that Champions League experience, it was obviously awesome to see you start at the Bernabeu, but yeah, what has that experience been like for you, um, you know, as a footballer and as a person? Yeah, it's a very, it's a testing place. Um, every day you go in, you the ball, you just uh, train in 100 mile an hour. That's the way you want to like it. And, um, There's no days where it's just chill. So it's intense and it's a good place to be, like I said before, to test yourself, uh, improve. Um, yeah, but I. I'm just soaking it all in, trying to enjoy the moment, um, trying to do my best. And yeah, I've I've been given some amazing opportunities already, and um, yeah, one day I'll look back and I'll I'll be like, I can't believe I did that, but um, that's not for now, and just keep trying to achieve more. And just on Champions League, that experience, and I guess how that's ready to give for. The World Cup? Yeah. Champions League's uh, the top level in club football. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to be involved and um, yeah, it's an eye-opener at the level that these some of the teams uh, are at and the players. Um, it just pushes you that you yeah, you've got to be better um, if you want to if you want to win games at that level and um, yeah. You, you learn little things on the pitch or from playing against top players, so hopefully I can become better. And how big is the, um, sorry, David Weiner from Keep Up as well, um, the motivation coming from playing in the Champions League, coming to the World Cup, you, you say you're chilled, but then when you look at the opportunity to test yourself against the likes that France are going to have in midfield, how does that still you, how do you prepare for an occasion like that? Yeah, as, it, as you get closer, you, the, I don't know, the, the tension starts to build and yeah, once you're playing, you're not really thinking uh, about who you're playing, you're just playing the game and yeah, that's, that's what I've always done throughout my career, I've played at a good level uh, throughout my career, so yeah, I did. When you start playing, you want to be in a zone where you're not thinking too much. You just you're playing the game. Hey, Aaron, Clint Stanaway from Nine, mate. Um, just intrigued about your relationship with Ange and whether he had a parting message for you. I mean, he's starred in this movie before, the World Cup movie. Um, did he have anything to say to you before you jumped on the plane? He just said to all the lads that were uh, going off to the World Cup, I think there was four of us, just said in front of everyone, we wish you all the best and had a message for us. And um, yeah, it's nice. It was nice, nice uh, send off. So that was it. Nothing, nothing one on one or personal, just as a group. Hi, Kurt Hall from Reuters. Um, I asked Keanu the same thing, but do you think you and the rest of the players connected Scotland are bringing Scotland fans along to, to Australia? And is there something to say about the Jockaroos? About the... Jockaroos is what it's being called. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know about that name, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, there's lots of half Scottish players here, um, yeah, my, for sure, well, why not, um, yeah, the, the, Scotland's not here, so, yeah, hopefully they can get behind us. And I, I want to ask you about the, the video that was released by Australia about uh, human rights as far as gay, gay people and workers here in Qatar, and what that meant to you, and if the whole team, the whole squad now is carrying that banner here. I'd just rather talk about the World Cup, if that's okay. Sorry. 